five, four, three. Good morning. This is Dr. John Bennett televising from Miami for Neurosurgical TV. We have the pleasure again of having Ipe Cherian, uh, an aficionado of this technology. Um, he'll tell you the title of his talk. Uh, first, I'd like to, we're going to get a little late start here. We have Sir J.D. Maba from Africa. He's not able to introduce himself. His microphone is off. So, okay, Ipe. Ipe, it's all yours. Okay. Uh, so today, John, we'll be talking about uh, two things. One is uh, cavernous sinus dissections, and two would be uh, a double we clicked uh, last week. So I'm going to start off with uh, the cavernous sinus dissection. I'm going to show you a case and then go over to uh, how we dissect. So this is a case where uh, we had done a supracellar tumor for the patient uh, uh, a couple of weeks back. All these cases I am uh, showing from just a couple of weeks back. So I'm going to show you first we did a, a BOZ, chondroorbital zygomatic craniotomy. And after that, you can see the frontal lobe, the temporal lobe, and the orbit. And I'm going to show you between the frontal, temporal, and the orbit, you're going to see the orbitomeningeal band. And after I dissect the orbitomeningeal band down, you're going to see the anterior clinoid, and I have taken up the anterior clinoid. And after that, you see I have done the sagittal unlocking, the axial unlocking, as well as intradurally, I will do the sylvian dissection, which is called the oblique intradural lock. So the brain is like that, unlock first like that. That is the sagittal locking. Okay. And then the, the temporal lobe, which is like that, is taken away from the cavernous, cavernous, cavernous sinus. That is called the axial unlock. Okay. And then you have the frontal and temporal lobe. You are going to open it. The sylvian fissure, once it opens, it opens oblique intradural unlock. These are the three unlockings you can do to get to the skull base or to get into the base of the brain. So without, uh, I mean, without, uh, uh, without any, any delay, I'm going to share. Okay? Tell me if you are seeing my... Are you... Are you seeing my desktop? Yes? Hold on. I, yeah, I can see. Uh, okay. Uh, not yet. Okay, there we go. There we go. This is an aneurysm done by my consultants. <laughs> so I'm, just, I'm just looking at them. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you the cavernous sinus dissection that I am. Okay, we're not, we're not saying the screen share, right? Okay. There we, there we go. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Perfect. Are you able to see this? Yes, we can see it. Yes. Can you see? Right, I'm gonna put it on VLC actually. Uh, open with VLC. Right. Are you seeing it? Yes, we are. All right. So, uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm cutting that. I mean, let us first pause it. This is frontal lobe. Okay. Okay. That is temporal lobe. That is the temporal lobe, frontal lobe, and orbit. So you have the frontal lobe, temporal lobe, and orbit first exposed by a FOZ approach. The FOZ approach and the bond removal has given us the frontal lobe, the temporal lobe, the orbit, and the meningo orbital band, which I am going to dissect right now. That's a meningo orbital band. Okay. So I'm going to dissect it right now and uncover uncover the climate. Okay. See, I'm dissecting, and that is a that is a climate. Can you see, guys? Can you see? 
Uh, Abraham, can you see it? Seeing it, everybody? Yeah. Oh, hold yes, on. Yes, I can. Right. Yeah. Okay, so I'm dissecting the dura of the clinoid. Can you, you can see the clinoid there. That's a frontal lobe. That's a temporal lobe. Orbitomeningeal band has been dissected and the clinoid is being dissected now. And I'm taking a stitch there. Another stitch there. Don't, I don't, never put dissectors because dissectors will take up your space. Okay, the stitches give you more space. The dissectors take up your space. So the clinoid is slowly taken away. Lateral clinoid can easily be bitten off. There's no need to drill it. Lateral clinoid is soft bone. Being dissected, you can see lateral to that is a superior orbital fissure. Now we are drilling the clinoid away. Be very, very careful drilling this clinoid. This will be optic nerve. This will be optic nerve. And you're drilling the clinoid above the carotid ocular motor membrane, which is covering the C3 carotid. So again, this is frontal lobe, temporal lobe, cavernous sinus. And this part, what I'm showing right now with the arrow, that is your optic nerve. So I'm drilling off the clinoid there under very high zoom. Slowly seeing whether it is breaking. It's easily breaking. You see that? Elevating it and elevating it further from the optic nerve and further drilling it. Very, very uh, less force there under a lot of irrigation with a diamond. Again, seeing whether it is moving, it's moving, elevating it off, erotic. Seeing how it is. So you can see the optic now and you will be able to see the carotid. Actually, the carotid oculomotor membrane. And I'm going to, this is, this is a superior orbital fissure. This is a superior orbital fissure. The cavernous sign is overlying the superior orbital fissure. And I'm going to take off this temporal lobe away from this. So this is called axial unlocking. So under very high zoom, I'm taking off this temporal lobe. I'm doing a transcavernous. It's the, actually, it's not transcavernous. It's a pericavernous dissection. So what I'm doing is, see the frontal lobe? The temporal lobe would have been here like that. The temporal lobe, I am unlocking it so that the temporal lobe and the frontal lobe, the curvature between the temporal lobe and the frontal lobe is almost nothing. And I can get into the base like the basal artery paneurysm, everything I can get into like that very easy. So here the case is a cavernous, uh, I mean, here the case is a supracellar mass, craniopharyngioma. So I, I don't have to unlock it till the cavaze, I have to unlock it till only till the V2. So I'm unlocking it. You can see a little bit of uh, clinoid optic strut is left. See how beautifully the true cavernous membrane is uh, preserved. No bleeding at all. It's a live case. It's not uh, some cadaver case. So it's a live case. People tell me, Oh, if you dissect cavernous sinus, you will have bleeding. No bleeding. You can see. See, the true cavernous membrane is being dissected. Medially, you can see optic strut. Further, temporal lobe is being peeled off of the true cavernous membrane. We will show it in the dissection also.
So that's the cavernous sinus. That's the superior orbital fissure, and the cavernous sinus overlying it. We are going back. See, this curvature is nothing now. You can get into the base here. If you get into the base here, you're in the suprasella system. If you cut the dura there, you're in the suprasella system. To get into this layer is, I mean, difficult. If you get into a wrong layer, you will have severe, severe bleeding. So your sutures will help you to keep on doing that. If at all you have a small bleeding point, you can put surgicel. And now you can go ahead. You can see the carotid. You can see the optic nerve. This is the entire dolings. So you see the cavernous sinus, transcavernous dissection is done. The temporal lobe is completely off the cavernous sinus. Anterior clinoid is removed. And you see the frontal temporal curvature. It is nothing now. Frontal temporal curvature is done for. So you can start opening the dura here in the base. And then that's it. So that was the case. Now I will show you the anterolateral dissection. Exactly what we did right now. Okay. Okay, anterolateral dissection. The same thing, what we did. Cutting the orbitomeningeal band. Look at only this window, this window. So exactly what we did now. In the case, so this is less zoom so that you can understand what we are doing. This frontal lobe, temporal lobe, and this is the other side. This is the frontal lobe, this is the temporal lobe, and see how it is dissecting out beautifully. Bloodless extradural lateralization of temporal lobe. Okay, so now what we did for that craniopharyngioma, I'm showing you. This is the trans, I mean, the, the true cavernous membrane. This is the V2, superior orbital fissure. We had dissected till here first, okay, in this case. Now, in, the, in this, we are dissecting the whole, whole thing. That means this is V2, V1, fourth nerve, third nerve, clinoid, optic. Carotid will be here. We will show you. Same dissection, first in the case, and then, to make you to understand, we are showing you in, uh, in the cadaver. So, V1, V2, we are going towards the gazillion ganglion. The same dissection we have in cases also. About a month back, we had done an intracavernous uh, vascular malformation where the meningohypophyseal artery was supplying uh, uh, vascular malformation involving the superior petrosal sinus. So we had to go in with the Parkinson's triangle that is uh, between uh, fourth and V1, and then we clipped the uh, meningohypophyseal trunk. So we are showing that dissection this is extensive dissection. So you can see the gazillion ganglion here. This is V1, V2, V3. And behind V3, you will see the Kawasaki triangle. So just now for the case, we had only dissected up to V2. The cavernous sinus dissection, the case that we showed, we had showed only dissected up to V2. So that is the Gazerian ganglion. And I, I was just showing the Meckel's cave there. That dural band is the GSPN. 
going extradurally over the GSPN to expose the Kawasaki triangle. This is the Kawasaki triangle. I personally, I prefer an extended Kawasaki approach where I drill the foramen ovale and mobilize this uh, gastric ganglion anteriorly, and then I can drill even the uh, even the trigeminal impression. I can drill the absolute true Peters apex. I can take it off. I have to always be careful about the carotid there. That is a GSPN because the carotid will come very, very medially there. So we can also even, uh, so now what you're seeing is, this is the fourth nerve, the TCM over the fourth nerve. This is the carotid. That is the sixth nerve. That is the sixth nerve coming and going medial to V1. That is not the Peter's apex, I'm sorry. Um, so now we are going to show you the anterior clinoidectomy, just like what we did there in the case. So that is intradural, intradural optic nerve, intradural carotid, extradural carotid and extradural optic nerve, you will see here once I take off this. That's intradural carotid, C2. Third nerve, fourth nerve, V1, V2. Clinoid is being taken off. Clinoid and the uh, clinoid is being taken off. You can see the clinoid being delivered out. So you can see the extradural carotid, extradural carotid will be there. Intradural carotid we already saw. Delivering out the optic strut. So that is a extradural carotid. That is intradural carotid. That is the optic now. Third now, fourth now, V1, V2. So this is complete cavernous sinus dissection. That's a dural band. You have to cut it all across like that. And then you can mobilize this carotid, keeping in mind that the ophthalmic artery is there. So, well, that is the cavernous sinus dissection that I was talking to you about. Now, I would like to show you one of the aneurysms, double aneurysms that we clipped. There's nothing uh, very tough, but uh, I just wanted you to see this aneurysm because it's got a very different anatomy, okay? So the first one was an IC bifurcation aneurysm. And uh, the patient had bled. We did the angio and we showed two aneurysms. One was a PCOM, giant PCOM aneurysm, and another was an IC bifurcation aneurysm. Okay, I would like to show it in uh, VLC. Are you seeing? Yes, oh, no. yes. This is uh, not the first one. I would like to show the yeah. seven, right? No, I think I got it wrong. So, okay, this is the clipping of the PCOM. Okay, this is the clipping of the PCOM. So 
you can see the tent is cut there. I have uh, gone ahead and cut the tent. We had no space at all. So we had to cut the tent because if you don't cut the tent, then if you don't have space and you try to push the clip in there, it will be disaster. So the first clip aneurysm is already clipped. That is IC bifurcation one, and this is the PCOM, which we have clipped now. Okay. So uh, I think I got the wrong clip. So let me just. Uh, Okay, this one is the IC bifurcation. I got it, I got it. Okay, so that was the PCOM being clipped now. And this is the IC bifurcation aneurysm. And you see, this is very, very strange aneurysm. You see, this is the one which was bled. So the PCOM was not the one which had bled, but this was the one which had bled. So you can see the IC, you can see the MC coming up here, and you can see the AC there. <laughs> the AC is from the posterior side of the, Posterior side of the uh, IC, okay, and this is the bifurcation aneurysm. This is the aneurysm. So this was the one which had bled. So the the brain was really tight to start with. I wish I can show you. This. You can see the bleeding here. All the blood is here. It was all around blood. So we dissected everything, and we went ahead. And this is the optic nerve. That is the IC. That is the AC. And the MC is here continuing like that. The sylvian fissure will be open, uh, proximal sylvian. And then we are identifying, we are cutting off all those arachnoid bands one by one. Slowly making space for the clip. Making space for the clip, separating that aneurysm from the a1, making sure that uh, our clip doesn't catch any part of A1. <coughs> you must understand it's a ruptured aneurysm. The other one, PCOM, was not ruptured. So PCOM, I could uh, take a little bit more liberty. But this one, one has to be extremely careful. I'm ready for the rupture here. But you must do not put any temporary clips before we clip. Most of the aneurysms, we don't put any temporary clips. We clip directly. So, we're going to clip now. I made it sure that I don't catch the A1. Then going in there. I'm using a larger clip than usual because I don't have the correct size of clips. Sometimes this is a problem in Nepal. So I'm using a much larger clip than I would like to. But it's clipped. Large or small clip, it's done. Finished. Okay. So we did the ICG. And then after this, I would like to, again, I am, I'm just confirming making sure I'm not taking anything in clip. So I'm after this clip, I have to show you the, the other, other one, the PCOM. This is after the clip. So This app, Apple is a terrible, terrible. Huh? <laughs> no, I am trying to. Okay. I'm sharing. Can you see, guys? Uh, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. I, we just see the beautiful picture.
All right. So yeah, now we can see it. So you can see it. Yes. Now that is, I have clipped the IC bifurcation. Now I'm going to go for the posterior communicating energy. So first thing first I did, what, what I did was I cut the tend here. I did a, took a little bit of anti-decline anodectomy intradurally. I generally do not do it intradurally. I don't like intradural anti-decline anodectomy. I like only, I, I generally do posterior, posterior I mean, anti-decline anodectomy only extradurally. Even if it is an aneurysm, I do it extradurally. You see how I dissect without any force I can take, I, I do the anti-decline anodectomy. But here, I did not expect that I will have trouble putting in the clip. So I, I did a dural opening here. You can see the V there. And I took off the anti-declinoid, tailored anti-declinoid to me. And then I cut the tent. The tent was all the way to here. So I cut the tent. I coagulated and cut the tent. One has to be very careful when you do that because the third nerve is right lateral here. So you got to be very careful. So coagulated and cut the tent here. Then I get, got the space for the clip to go in. Okay, for the clip to go in. And this is the giant, this is a large aneurysm. So you can see now uh, how I'm putting the clip. Again, one thing you have to be very, very careful about putting the clip is your clip axis has to be leading away from the peacock. Okay, the clip axis. If your clip axis is leading into the peacock, you will have a peacock compromise. So you don't want a peacock compromise. So your clip axis is away from the I see. Okay. So yeah. And again, you have to be very careful if your clip axis is in. Sometimes you can go and rupture the energy. All right. So you have to be very, very careful while closing. You close and then you open. You close and then you open. You close and then you open. You make space and the clip axis is leaving. What happened? Okay. We left the screen there. <clears throat> Happen. Okay, uh, not yet. We just see the picture right now. Uh, we are sharing? No, we don't see the presentation. We just see a picture. Okay. Now we will see. One second. Hey, whoop. Uh. <clears throat> Okay. There, we, there we go. Yes, we can see it now. Right. So, I'm just going to, yeah, see how, what I'm doing, I put the clip, the other clip is already on here. Now, this also clip, the PCOM is also clip. I'm moving it as far away from, as far away from the PCOM. Go in there, gently move as far away from the pecom and then this way. You can see the pecom there going in. I'm uh, in between. Uh, see, so there is a beautiful small cut there of the tent, tailored anterior clinoidectomy, and that's a clip. Okay. So then we are examining. That is a clinoidectomy, tailored clinoidectomy probably a few millimeters. That is your optic nerve. That is your optic mechanism. That is your A1, posterior A1 arising there. You can see the PCOM there. That is a PCOM. That is a PCOM. Okay, clearly seen now. Perforators, membrane of liliquis there. The tailor, the cut in the tent. This patient is back to the ward. So that's about it. So we have uh, shown the cavernous sinus dissection. After I showed you the anterolateral dissection, uh, maybe I can show you again once more the cavernous sinus. You will understand more. So that is your frontal lobe. That's your temporal lobe. And that is your orbit, FOZ. And that is the orbital band being cut. So to recap it, 
Then go a little band is being cut. The anticlinoid. That is the extradural optic now. That is your anticlinoid. Stitches being taken under very high zoom. That's anterolateral clinoid being taken off. And then now drill. Drilling off the clinoid. So you have so much space once you dissect the orbitomeningeal band. So much space. Extradural optic nerve there. Extradural optic nerve. Carotid is here. Extradural carotid is here. C3. Clinoid being taken off. Slowly. Carotid there. Over the carotid. Oculocarotid. Oculocarotid membrane is there. So. Taken off. And then you are cutting. Now see the entire cavernous sinus. See the cavernous sinus being dissected. The superior orbital fissure in the cavernous sinus being dissected. The temporal lobe is temporal lobe is falling off. The cavernous sinus. So you have anticlinoid, anticlinoidectomy here, extradural optic nerve, carotid, cavernous sinus. So the whole Dolling's approach clearly demonstrated. What is, that? what is the advantage of this? The advantage of this is that you're getting into the base of the brain very easily. Okay. The frontal lobe was supposed to be here. Temporal lobe was supposed to be here. You would have needed to, uh, I mean, to go through the small space here. But here, what you're doing is, you've done a pericavernous dissection. So, to get into this space is very easy for you. Okay. See how the TCM is kept and the pericavernous dissection is being done. You can do this for basal active aneurysms. You can do this for craniopharyngiomas. You can do this for any any tumor near in and near the mammillary bodies. Okay. You can do this for a, even a pontine cavernoma based anteriorly. So you can see the TCM being dissected off. And the temporal lobe pulled extradurally laterally so that the brain is opened out. The brain is really opened out. This is Dolling's approach. Uh, my modification of the Dolling's approach is that I keep the TCM. So no bleeding, no injection into the cavernous sinus and all that. No need. No bleeding at all. If you open the TCM, severe bleeding, bad bleeding. So, extradural carotid, extradural optic nerve, and now you are ready to open the dura. See how easily I can go into the base. So, the whole principle of cystinostomy, trying to get into the base. Okay, trying to get into the base. Okay, extradural. In a trauma brain, this is much more difficult, but if you do the sharp dissection, once you reach this point, it's much more easy. Okay, trauma brain, the brain is going to be extremely tight, but you can do this. I mean, I have shown you. Many, many videos of how we do it in trauma. Anyway, today our topic was cavernous sinus dissection and uh, double aneurysm clipping. So I hope we are done. Any questions, I'll be happy to answer and then I'll be on my way. Thank you. I'll stop sharing now. Okay, I thank you very much. Uh, this is the last minute get together for this hangout, for this. Uh, uh, webcast. We have a few more guests, Ipe, I want to introduce to you before we go on. Boran, could you uh, say hello to Ipe? Unmute yourself, please. Unmute. Okay, I guess, can you unmute? Uh, the, the, can you just say where you're from, etc., Boran? Thank, thank you. It was excellent. Thank Very good. Thank you, Boran. Duong, welcome back. Duong, can you unmute, please? And uh, Say hi to I. I'm sorry I come late. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Tian from hi. Vietnam. Nice to meet all of you. 
Very good. Welcome, Duong and Ahmad. Ahmad, could you please introduce yourself? Uh, unmute yourself there, Ahmad. Yes, I know you from Facebook. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for this presentation. Unfortunately, I came late to this presentation. I am uh, a neurosurgeon in Germany, um, and uh, my um, uh, basic uh, activity is tumor uh, surgery, and uh, I'm very glad to be here. Very good, Ahmad. Okay, uh, Marco, could you say hi to I, please? Sir, thank you so much for the presentation. Hi, everybody. You probably recognize Marco I, from uh, past presentations. And Serge Eddy Maba, I believe he's from Nigeria, but he has problems with his, uh, uh, his audio. Uh, okay, we'll open uh, it up. Go ahead, go ahead. Yes, no, uh, I'm from, from Cameroon. I'm a resident, neuros uh, neurosurgical resident, uh, but I'm uh, studying in Zimbabwe uh, under uh, Professor Kalangu. Okay, yeah, well, I friend Dr. Uh, Dr. Kazadi from. Yes. I, Thank I, you for I, the presentation, Professor Ipe. Okay, he works with. Ipe, we can't hear you. We can't hear you, Ipe. We cannot hear you, Ipe. You, am I muted to you? Uh, no. Okay, any questions on the presentation by Ipe uh, panelists? Ahmad, Boran, Duong? Marco, I know you guys came late. I, I'm sorry, I cannot uh, uh, place any question because I didn't see all the um, presentation, but I just uh, to may, uh, want to make a comment. I love this approach. I love this extradural anterior clinidectomy. So yeah, a lot of, of neurosurgeons in Germany make it intradurally, so they manipulate directly at the brain and the, uh, that make a lot of, of trauma on the brain. And I uh, was in hospitation in uh, Boston by Dr. Al-Mufti and uh, in the talk by Dr. Ali Krisht. Uh, they, uh, uh, they are doing this approach basically. They, didn't, they don't manipulate and the anterior clinoid uh, intradurally. So I love this approach. Um, it is a very, very professional. And um, I am sad now that I didn't see uh, all the presentation, but I will try to, to, to say it later if you um, put it on your, on your Facebook uh, site. Okay, Ahmad, we'll try to notify you a little earlier. We kind of got this together at the last minute. Um, okay, any other comments, uh, Duong? Did, did you hear enough for the presentation to comment or have a question? You need to unmute Wang. Um, I'm I'm sorry because I uh, I, I cannot uh, yeah from beginning I have no more question and no more comment. Okay, okay. Well, thanks for coming, Duong. Yeah, the important part of these is networking. Go ahead. I you have something to say? Goran, Goran, can uh, can you come in? I'm sorry. What'd you say? I Boran, 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 any comments? Yeah. You know, I, I, I've got to get you a headset. We got to get your audio. Actually, I, I, I couldn't. Could you hear me? Yeah, yeah. we can hear you now, Boran. Uh, actually, I couldn't hear you easily. Uh, so that's why maybe I couldn't uh, understand what you said every time. Uh, maybe I will check uh, at neurosurgical TV later uh, the presentation again because the voice was uh, too low. By the way, if you say your birthday to to me and Dr. Bennett, we will send you a headset for birthday gift. <laughs> okay. Okay. <I'll> <laughs> Yeah, Christmas has to come early, I Boran was saying. <laughs> okay, very good. Uh, yeah, sorry for the late start. We couldn't really promote the, this talk and everything. I you've been you just got back from New Delhi, right? Yeah, yeah. I just got back. Uh, can we is Hera there? Can she come in and say hi? Thanks, I thank you. 
Hi. Hi, Hira. Hi, Hira. Can you please introduce yourself and tell what you're doing, etc.? A little closer to the mic. We can't hear you. A little closer. Can you hear me? Yeah, now we can hear you. Yeah. Hi, this is Hira from Pakistan, now in Nepal. And I'm the president of the Asian Medical Student Society. And we are here to organize our conference in Nepal. So you're all welcome to join us. And we have for 29 minutes to be Okay. Could you get a little closer to the mic microphone, uh, Hira, and tell us about the event at the end of the month? Yeah, we have an event. Uh, it's organized by the Asian Medical Student Society, and we are all invited to Nepal at the Pashtarian Institute on November 29th and 30th. And um, we have a good faculty coming up and a, and a hands on session on uh, microvasculosis and drilling, spine sessions. So, medical students and young neurosurgeons are more than welcome to come. Please join us. Okay, you want to screen share, share where uh, your page, the uh, Asian Congress of Neurosurgeons? You know how to screen share, right? Uh, that's okay. You don't, you don't have to do it. You don't have to do it. If, if you want, you can. Yeah, we're just going to have, there's a neurosurgical event taking place at the end of the month, mostly designed for residents and uh, students at Bharatnagar, Nepal. Okay, okay, now you don't, you don't have to show it. Okay, okay, very good. Very good. Uh, is there any, any other people visiting, uh, visiting there we could be introduced to? Is that, Hello, hi. Could you please introduce yourself? Yes, I am Sudeep Shrestha, uh, neurosurgeon, doing uh, Okay, very good. Can everybody hear? Okay, can can you can you hear? The sound is not too good. We can, we have to get I some a headset, but uh, we can hear you. Well, thank you all for coming, um, and uh, sorry about the late start and everything. But well, we got most of the presentation done and recorded, and we met some people here. Uh, so, um, okay. Thank you very much. This will be recorded, and everyone's going to receive it. Thank you, Hera. Thank you for the graphic. And well, welcome, sir. You're welcome to participate in any, any uh, events we have. We have an upcoming event from Japan on November 3rd, and you'll all get notices about what exactly it's about. Uh, and I'm going to China to work with Yuha uh, Boran. I'm going to China probably in December and uh, be working with Yuha to, to try to establish a China channel of neurosurgeons online. I, I, I met with Professor Hernesiem in Istanbul at uh, 2017. Uh, maybe I will try to go to his uh, hospital this summer. Uh, well, excellent, excellent. Your choice is uh, so, so exactly so right. So, so real, real and a great person uh, will you go to the next. Yeah, well. Uh, he's a, he's a, definitely, he's a hero like LMFT or, or Spetsler. Maybe, you know, American uh, doctors most famous in the world, right? But in neurosurgical societies, Professor Hardenstein was one of the heroes. Well, well, you know, uh, uh, he's a big, big believer in this technology. Yeah. Uh, we've had him on many of these, uh, Boran. We have had him on many of these webcasts uh, mm -hmm. because he's dedicated to teaching. Now, yeah. Yeah. he's dedicated. He's totally dedicated. And he really wants to get the Chinese neurosurgical community online and, and active and plus he'll be able to reach more uh china's the biggest country in the world <laughs> yeah. uh, and there's more you can imagine the number of neurosurgeons there that we can learn from uh and uh, i'm getting the, i got the impression that it's kind of opening up a bit as far as education 
uh, and I hope they like this platform. I'm kind of frustrated from here trying to get the community going is tough. I think I'm if I'm with them there, uh, it'll be a little bit easier. Uh, I met the head of the the biggest online online website for China. It's called Medtian. M E D. Let me let me uh, let me do my uh, part in showing you uh, doing a PowerPoint presentation. That's I'm going to I'm going to show you the website from China. Do, do they have English version? Uh, hold hold on. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I got the wrong one here. Hold on. I'm going to screen share the uh, <clears throat> Medtian. Okay, here's the website. Well, you don't understand Chinese. But anyways, this is one of the <clears throat> largest websites in China for neurosurgery. And I, I video chat. The, the head of this website is a Chinese neurosurgeon, first name Tao. Uh, he runs the website. And I'm going to try to put a channel there of, 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 of neurosurgical TV uh, on the website so that we'll reach a lot of Chinese neurosurgeons. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the program of Yuha uh, in, in China, you know, I, I believe now he offers fellowships. Uh, it's probably vascular-based, you know, what, what his expertise is in. Uh, I believe he has six fellows a year that he – gives position to at this point uh, because they're trying to grow the program there. And I think the hospital is trying to become the center for online education and neurosurgery. And that's why I'm going there. Uh, hopefully to sit down at a computer, talk to the neurosurgeons and show them. Uh, but as far as what exactly, Duong, the fellowship is, are you interested, Duong, in going to uh, – uh, China, Henan, that's where Yuha is, Henan Provincial Hospital. Are, are you interested in going, Duan? You're muted. Yes, uh, I, I want more, some details of the program so I can arrange my uh, duty. Uh, this is the website of the um, China Neurosurgical Society. Uh, well, I, he, the hospital has a website. Let me let me see if I can get the uh, the. Uh, just give me a second here. Okay, I control the screen. Okay, let me just see if I can. Okay. Yeah, there it is. Okay, you can see the screen, correct? Can you see the screen okay? Yeah. Okay, this is a hospital uh, that uh, it looks like quite a nice place. It's in a it's in a town called Zhenghu, which I have a hard time with pronunciation, and uh, maybe I'll learn a little Chinese. So we'll be able to relate to them, but they built a. They have a wing, the, the Yuha Hernes Demi wing. Wing. So uh, uh, he's uh, he's he seems to be dedicated to getting it going, not only as an operating center but as an educational center for for. Uh, uh, China and uh, Rakesh, you're also interested. Great, that that would this, yeah, well, yeah. This, well, this is a hospital where it would be. It looks yeah. it looks actually quite nice. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've run to many many people that are in China from other parts of the world doing residencies in in neurosurgery. Mm -hmm. uh, Prashant Prashant, who usually joins us, uh, is a neurointensivist from uh, India. He's been at this hospital. He was there for, he did his residency and he learned Chinese. Okay. He learned Chinese. And he, he oh, told me, okay. told me it took about two years to learn. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> okay. Well, well, uh, yeah, I'll be there. <clears throat> Hopefully next month, sure. uh, Rakesh. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll continue to have these presentations, and I imagine yeah, yeah. I imagine they'll want to show what they're doing at the hospital to generate interest in people like you in doing fellowships, uh, as well as showing the world what they're doing uh, at, at their hospital. I'm sure you, as Duong alluded to, is a big aneurysm guy in the world. Baran knows him. He met him in Istanbul, um, and he's just huge. Uh, and I don't know if, if anyone has seen his videos, uh, but he he has made uh, a video. He's made us more than a thousand videos on. Okay, do, do you see this? Okay. No, we can't. We can We can't see your shit. You can't see it. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me let me try again. I want to show you you I think everyone has probably seen them, but has, has, have you seen these? Yeah, videos? I can see. Yeah, have you seen yeah, these yeah. videos, Boran, before Duong? Have you seen Yuha's videos? I know, I know. I know. Yes, I, 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 yeah, yeah. I, I know it. Well, uh, the the the, the uh, I'll send you guys the link if you don't. Do you have the link? Uh, and Rakesh, you've probably seen it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 I've seen it. I have the link. You can share in this chat box. Yeah, uh, I, uh, I, uh, uh, I'm showing them Yuha's videos. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. John, do you think, is it okay if I carry it on? I'm sorry, what's that? Do you think I can, I, do you think I can carry on, please? Yes, sure, <laughs> sure, sure. Hey, we're the boss. We can do what we want. We own the station. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so today we did the, I mean, the, the, this thing is recorded, the cavernous sinus and the two double aneurysms are recorded. Okay, you can share the screen now. Right? No, uh, do you think the, the, the cases that I showed today is recorded, John? Yes, it's all recorded. Great, great. So I'll carry on now and uh, next Sunday also we'll do something, whatever. Uh, I can do, a, uh, we just did a cavernoma, pontine cavernoma with uh, using a telovillar approach. So I can uh, show you that. And then we are going to do a petroclival meningioma uh, in two days, large giant petroclival meningioma in two days. So I will be using the same approach where uh, I will be doing a dolenx, combining a dolenx with a kawase. And then I'll be showing that uh, uh, and that also. If there are any other aneurysms, um, I can show you that also. We might have a basilar coming up. So I can show you that also. Okay, very good. I, could you tell us a little bit Thank about you, about what your plans are with fellowships at at, at uh, Nobel? Yeah, John. So we have four seats uh, for fellowships for uh, for skull base and vascular. Uh, the fellowships are six months each. So. Uh, you will have to apply through the Asian CNS and once uh, you select it, you can come join us. We'll pay you $600 per month. We'll give you accommodation as well. And then you can uh, scrub in with us for cases. And then uh, you can come for dissections to the lab. And then you can come with me to, uh, to conferences, whatever conferences I go and lead, anterolateral and skull base workshop you, you can uh, come and uh, um, dissect with me. And at the end of six months, we will have an exam, uh, online exam. And if you pass this exam, your fellowship will be given. This is it. Uh, the only problem is we used to take three candidates per year and we are full till 2022. So, but we, fortunately, we've been given uh, one or two more candidates from now on. So, uh, till 2020, uh, we have three more places to fill. So if anybody of you interested, you are, you are most welcome to come here and uh, do skull base with us. Okay. You've had a few fellows go through now uh, already, right? A couple yeah, of fellows? People from Egypt, uh, from Yemen, from Venezuela, from India. So we had uh, uh, many fellows. So now Sudib is my fellow. Sudib here is my fellow. Again, he has finished six months. 
he wants to, uh, he will be doing for one year. So after one year will be his exam. So okay. this is only for uh, neurosurgeons who have completed their uh, basic degree of neurosurgery, not for residents. Um, so once they finish neurosurgery, they can come with us. If they are interested in skull base and vascular, they can come with us and train. Okay, very good. Very good. Okay, any more comments or questions from anybody? Anybody want to talk about anything? That's okay. It's a free forum here. Okay, I will wrap this up. Thank Hera for her help. And uh, you, have you, a, so much, you, you have a great day, I and everyone else too. Thank you, I'm thank just, you, Dr. Thank I'm you, Dr. John. Okay, I'm just going to stop the broadcast. You can hang out. Thank you, Goodbye. everyone. Thanks, everyone, for coming.